Hey, greetings, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Allen West, and welcome to the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. You gotta light them up before they burn it down. Better dig deep and put them in the ground. Blood on their hands, they're hell bound. Save us all. This episode of the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast is brought to us by our friends at the United States Concealed Carry Association. The USCCA helps responsible Americans like you prepare for what happens before, during, and after an act of lawful self-defense. USCCA members get life-saving education, expert training, plus self-defense liability insurance. These benefits provide more than 500,000 USCCA members with the peace of mind that they deserve. Plus, a USCCA membership is always risk-free with their 100% money-back, quote-unquote, bulletproof guarantee. Membership is truly an investment worth exploring. Click Learn More below right now to activate your United States Concealed Carry Association membership. Click Learn More right now. And remember, the USCCA is not an insurance company. A policy has been issued to the USCCA by Universal Fire and Casualty Insurance Company. That policy provides the association and its members with self-defense liability insurance subject to its terms, conditions, limitations, and exclusions. And ladies and gentlemen, if we continue to have violent criminals released back out onto the streets, you have the right to be able to defend yourself, and the USCCA will make sure that you can have a proper defense of yourself if it comes to a legal court hearing. We'll be right back. Hey, greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. And I am joined by someone that I have had the pleasure and honor of being live on set with up there in New York City. And I just want to have a conversation with him and really get to know him a little better and help America to get to know him really better. And because I am, I am really feel that this is someone that is impactful uh, to our country at this critical moment because we need men and women to just speak the truth and speak the truth in a very concise and precise manner. And so we are joined by, get this, George Murdoch, born February in Boston, 1973, is an American professional wrestler, cable news personality, and actor known by his ring stage name, Tyrus. As a wrestler in 2021, he signed to the National Wrestling Alliance, NWA, where he is the reigning NWA World's Heavyweight Champion in his first reign. As a cable news personality, he appears on Fox News. I'm sure you all see him every night on Greg Gutfeld's show and his sister streaming service, Fox Nation. Primarily, he is there as that co-host and panelist with Greg Gutfeld, as well as a contributor and fill-in host on other programs. Tyrus just recently published his first autobiography, Just Tyrus, a memoir in 2022, which has become a New York Times bestseller. Tyrus, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here at the Steph Fast and Law Podcast. Thank you for that long resume. I might, I might start believing some of that stuff. Well, you should, believe, you should believe it. You earn it. Now, I, I'm, I feel a little slighted because I don't see the belt. But I understand. I've seen it before. Well, I'm, if it makes you feel better, I got my daddy cap on today. So uh, I got, my, uh, yeah, I got my daughters at the pool and all that fun stuff. So I'm doing the dad, dad stuff, and uh, they're the champs during that time. Well, so. there's nothing like that. I have two daughters. As a matter of fact, uh, my oldest daughter is hitting a milestone this Sunday Easter. It's the big three zero, and my youngest oh, daughter is 26. So enjoy those girls. There's nothing like it. And there's nothing like that relationship between daddy and daughter. So with that being said, tell us about you growing up in Boston, you know, how you got interested in, in wrestling and uh, what are the things that people should know about Tyrus that they really don't get a chance to see on stage and, and on air? 
Well, uh, the biggest thing is uh, I grew up in, in uh, Lynn, Massachusetts, uh, pro until I was about seven, and then uh, moved to California at that time. But uh, uh, was uh, things didn't start out the greatest. My mom was uh, 16 when she had me. Uh, father was uh, 19, and they were. Uh, and unfortunately, the the drug monster uh, got a hold of my uh, biological father, and uh, there was a lot of abuse and that kind of stuff. So. Uh, eventually, my mother was able to get away from him, and then uh, then we ran into the the realities of the times. Which uh, at that particular time, uh, my father being black and my mother white in the state of Massachusetts, uh, her family basically gave her an ultimatum that she could better herself, get you know, go back to school, get a trade or some sort of something to where she can take care of herself. But uh, they weren't going to take care of her kids while she did that, so she had to. Uh, make a tough decision uh, and give us up. But the problem was that the foster system was uh, very adamant that they could not guarantee that they keep me and my brother together. I said, yeah. if they was going to have a hard enough time placing us um, and the guarantee of putting two black boys in the same home together was slim and none. So, um, but they were able to find a family to take us in outside of the, the, the foster system. So, uh, and then of course I was reunited with my mother, uh, and we moved we moved out to California. So uh, growing up in California, coming from Boston in the middle of the great Lakers Celtic rivalry. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, so I was setting my team's uh, diehard Boston fan. And uh, but and then grew up in uh, grew up in California and then uh, got myself through high school, um, got myself into college. Got myself uh, graduated and chased the uh, pro ball for a little bit and then was uh, substitute teaching for a little while mm -hmm. and then started working clubs and tripped and fell. I was a bodyguard for Snoop and then uh, wow. tripped and fell and then ended up being a WWE superstar. I'll kind of just a lot of doors. One of the things that I talk a lot about in my book is uh, if you're putting your best foot forward and and working your, your tail off, good things happen, but they don't always happen the way you intend them. You never know what door is going to open for you when you're putting your best you, when you put your best foot forward. And a lot of doors are open for me based off of just work ethic. that had nothing to do with it. Like to feel like bouncing in a club at a high level and, and someone seeing that and be like, Hey, would you like to try that in the WWE, you know, and then going in transition and doing that. Uh, it always comes down to the same thing. Uh, your effort, your accountability and uh, i've been a walking example of that my entire life but of course you know i had to learn the hard way nothing yeah. easy uh all the road to success i got at least uh more speed bumps of failure along the way but that's part of char building character it is part of building character and uh i hate to use this but friedrich nietzsche once said that which does not kill us only serves to make us stronger and when i think about you know your story and what you just shared with us you know, my mom and dad taught me, I grew up in the inner city of Atlanta, Georgia, that in life you can choose to be a victor or a victim. And it's, you know, you could have had every reason to say, I'm a victim. I'm a perpetual victim. You know, I've been dealt a, a bad hand. But I think that that's what we have to get back to is people going out there and seeking what I call the equality of opportunity instead of settling for the equality of outcomes. So when I think about your triumphs and what you've been able to do, what a great role model, what a great story uh, to share with young people, because I think the young people in this country have bought into a, a, a bad bill of goods, if I can put it that way. Yeah, I think I couldn't agree with you more because the two things that uh, and this is why sometimes I, I, I say a lot about being outdated, uh, because uh, with time, with what the young people don't understand, and I didn't understand when I was a young person, but uh, with time come wisdom. And mm -hmm. with that wisdom, and when you when adults try to share that wisdom, it, there's good reason for it. Uh, and unfortunately, right now, nobody wants the real story. They want the quick fix. Mm -hmm. And our kids kind of, we've allowed that to happen with uh, instant gratification. You know, uh, if it's not, if you're not succeeding at something, it's not you, it's the situation. Mm -hmm. Like we're taking away the personal accountability, which uh, really hurts young people because the reality of the real world is um, it's the person in the mirror that's going to dictate your outcome. It's not 
what happens to you when you get punched in the mouth. It's it's not the you getting punched in the mouth that you're judged by. It's your reaction that you're judged yes. by. As an as a parent, uh, I see with the success of the generations and this generation coming up, uh, accountability is something that has become a, a four letter word. Mm-hmm. You know, my yeah. mother. My mother once said that the measure of a man is not how many times you get knocked down; it's how many times you get back up. So, how can we change that? Because when I look at the breakdown of that traditional nuclear family, when I look at how uh, we're creating more victims than victors, and it's always someone else's fault, and we accept the excuses and what have you, how do we start to change that narrative once again, and also regain respect for? Our, our, our adults, you know, the people that do have the wisdom. You know, that is such a great question, Mr. West, because um, we're, we're back, we're up against the quick fix. Yeah. And we're up against that no responsibility. Well, you know, uh, and unfortunately, certain outlets of this world, that's what they push. Yeah. And then you have, and it's always nobody, you know, it goes back to that, you know, that old adage of the grasshopper and the ants. The ants had to work all year, mm-hmm. to get their butts off so they would have a nice winter and the grasshopper didn't want to do anything but have a good time. And then he figured eventually the ants would bail him out. Yeah. You know, and I think we got a lot of grasshoppers right now because that's just, you're, you're just up against it. It's so quick and easy to get that message out there that, you know, and, it, and it's contagious. Um, failure is isn't the problem it's the that that wallowing in the mud after it happens and the fear of well i don't want to i don't want to try something because if i fail you know um, the fear of failure and the people who feed off it why fail why when you can just reinvent the game it's so much easier and that's that's a, a tough thing but we have to look at our approach you know i have to check myself all the time because uh you know when my kid my kids are young i got i got eight and 11 year olds yeah so when I see them want the, the quick out and I'm well, my, and my first thing is, hey, listen, when I was your age, I didn't do that. But I realize as soon as I say when I was your age, I've already lost them. You know, it's just yeah. it, it's a tough it's a t- as a parent. It's a tough battle because you're going up against it's just the, the candy versus uh, carrot. You know, we're trying to give them mm-hmm. carrots and everyone else is giving them candy right now. You know, it's uh, the the motto of the British Special Air Service, the SAS, is who dares wins. And Alexander the Great once said, fortune favors the bold. You know, how can we, you know, as parents and and now me, I'm a grandparent. I got a little two year old. How can we start making sure that we can push back successfully against this culture, this societal message, this soundbite mentality that, you know, we got to be able to do it in, you know, what, a hundred and something characters. We, we've just shortened down everything to sound bites. How can we get back to raising up these critical thinkers that we once had in this country? We as parents have to get back in the game. Yeah. So uh, that's such a great question. Uh, we have to get off the, the the technology ourselves because when you know we say like oh my kids are always on technology well who's allowing them that yeah. you are because because when they're on their little ipad with their headphones on they're quiet and they can be quiet and then all of a sudden you can go sit on your facebook and do your stuff but there's a complete disconnect between bonding and learning because they're getting their information from strangers and it's funny because you know when we were growing up if a stranger came over to sit in the house to chat with me about video games uh he would get his ass up out of there is he wouldn't <laughs> even be allowed in the house yeah but now we allow those strangers full access to our kids all day because we want to binge watch netflix you know binge watch our kids like we have to get back in the game which means that we have to give up some of our comforts as parents you know if you got what- two kids you shouldn't be taking pictures of what you're eating for dinner you, you know, it's such time. an incredible, uh, an incredible observation because, you know, I remember, you know, being in the car with mom and dad going down to South Georgia, you know, to see the old folks. 
And it, it wasn't about, you know, here's a, a, a video thing that's on the back of the, the passenger seat and I just zoned out. I mean, we were talking. I mean, I was getting quizzed on multiplication tables. I was given a book that I had to read out loud to them. All of these different type of interactions. You went out to eat dinner. Uh, you had conversations. Dinner in the house before, you know, you I, we could eat. We build relationships. and and. You, the alphabet game on the license plate. Yeah, my brother always cheated though. He he could find a <laughs> Q. He could find a Q anywhere. It was amazing. <laughs> that he could find a Q. But we, when I think about that stuff, and I try to do it to my kids, they look at me like I'm crazy. But I just have to be crazy. Yeah, like this is what we're gonna do. You know, uh, instead of Roblox, we're gonna play board games. You know, we're gonna because you have to interact and you gotta. But that's but we have to take the we have to take. The parenting back because then we end up with this these grown children who go off to school with absolutely no idea of what it is to be confronted with anything mm -hmm. or to deal with anything or understand the fact that there's people that are not going to like you uh there's real hardships in the world but we've gotten to a point in this country where the the fears are our biggest issues yeah. not the issues anymore you know, uh, you and I can have a conversation and talk about whatever we want to talk about in this country. Uh, we both have had opportunities to succeed in this country. Like opportunity is everywhere. And we're seeing uh, this attack on on our way of doing things with with uh, equity and yeah. telling kids that you don't have to put your best foot forward. So we'll find something for you. And if it doesn't work, don't worry about it. It's not you. It's them. So that's 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 the frustrating thing. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because that soft bigotry of low expectations is, is really yes. a cancer. And, you know, when I was growing up as, as a teenager, you didn't hear about your friends or some other, you know, killing themselves. But a lot of our kids today, they know of someone that has taken their own life. And then, like you say, you look at these shows out there that are glorifying some of these things. You know, I tend to, to believe that the only positive thing that came out of COVID was that parents finally had to be in the house with their kids and they had to look over the shoulders and see what was going on on that computer screen. And there is an awakening out there, but there is a force. There's an entity that does not want to have awakened parents and they're attacking the parents for doing exactly what you say, retaking control of their children. Uh, this is a very big challenge, I think, in America. What you say? What and, say you? The biggest thing is to turn it off. You know, it's such a simple thing. Turn it off. Like if your if your child is under sixteen years old, they don't need to have a Facebook and Instagram account. They shouldn't. They don't need those things. They shouldn't be on TikTok, unwarranted. You know, they should. If your kids, it's just like TV. It was rated. Unfortunately, in the internet, we don't have the ratings. You can try to do so many things as a parent, but when it came to movies and stuff, they'd have to watch the movie with you yeah. or they wouldn't watch it at all. You know, and we need to get to the point where you're not on social media unless I'm watching it. It's no different than it. You need supervision. Well, we what a great what a great they, thing, because remember, remember, there was once upon a time we could sit down with our parents and watch the Grammys. Yeah. Can't do that now. No, <laughs> it's just absolutely shame. So. Let's transition. How does Tyrus end up on the Greg Gutfeld show? I mean, well, speaking of uh, windows of opportunity. Yeah, it was the weird, weirdest thing uh, because I had no uh, expectations of working on uh, on Fox News. Um, we somehow got mixed up into a tag on uh, somebody was trolling him and on Twitter and somehow I got mixed up in it. I still have, don't not quite sure what the <laughs> thing was, but the guy was pretty, uh, the guy was pretty abusive and uh, he was saying a lot of negative things about Greg and comparing it. I think it was like fake, like wrestling or something, something stupid to that extent. And uh, I saw it across my feet and I just happened to be sitting in an airport. And uh, I basically wrote the guy like, Hey man, maybe you just don't know us. You know, maybe if we uh, flew you out, got lunch, hung out we went to a basketball game or something we could you know and the uh, the guy was so excited he's like really can i bring a friend <laughs> and i just wrote back no <laughs> and <I'm blocked. laughs> and that was the end of it you know and then greg was like uh i got a message from him saying that was funny and uh, you know you ever think about coming up would you like to come on my show sometime and i was like yeah right you know and uh 
It was produced. I came out. I was just going to do the one show. Uh, because I wasn't sure, you know, if they were like trying to like make fun of wrestlers or something. And I was like, they picked the wrong one. Hmm. But uh, I came on and uh, did the first show. It was light, it was simple. Um, and then during the first commercial break, he's like, man, you have really good timing. I'd love to, if you lived in New York, I'd make you a co-host. I said, well, obviously I'm not moving to New York. But uh, he's like, what about coming on like once a month or something like that? I was like, yeah, cool. Depending on my wrestling schedule. And then the the police issue happened. And that was probably the defining moment for me with uh, my career at Fox. So basically, uh, I believe it was a, uh, might have been in Louisiana what happened. I think it was a Sterling incident where the police fought with him for like four or five hours or whatever, mm -hmm. trying to bring this guy down. And he ended up, uh, I think he ended up dying during the arrest or whatever. So it was, you know, and the media is doing the, the black white cop thing pretty hard. And, uh, you know, to get all the ratings and stuff. And Greg asked me if, if I would speak on it. And I didn't, I, I had mixed, I'm a firm believer that you can have two thoughts on one subject. Yeah. Which means that I respect the hell out of law enforcement, but I also, I hate bad cops. I think yeah. that's a fair, I think that's a fair distinction. And I think you can understand that there is going to be, you can have one without the other. Not all mm -hmm. cops are bad. Mm -hmm. Not all cops look the other way. But for the ones who are dirty, you have a right to that individual because they're disgracing the badge that everyone else took the honor that had put honor and bust their ass for. So in, in being in that and being on the wrong side of it, you know, I've got messed with a few times in LA growing up and, and also sometimes look back to what I was doing at that time and who I was hanging out with. But uh, I basically gave my, my feel on it. And uh, I made a thing about uh, my message is this, if, you're resisting arrest. You're, you're not Rosa Parks. You're a criminal at that point. Yeah. So don't resist. You know, your goal should be to go home. And I'm going to go home. And I know that when a cop pulls me over, he's going to see my size 26 tattooed inch arm hang outside of the car. When I, I'm 6'8", I'm light skinned. I, all, I have everything against me. He's going to be afraid of me. Nothing. So I'm going to smile and I'm going to answer every question that he gives me because I'm going to go home. Yeah. He could make fun of me. He could be a jerk, do whatever he wants to do. Even if he put hands on me, I'm going to go home. That's my mindset. So, and I said, but for ev the, the two bad incidents that I've had with police, officers, I've had a hundred positive ones. I've went been stranded on the side of the road and a sheriff will stop in the rain to help me change a flat tire. I've been in an argument with my girlfriend at the time or whatever. And, and a sheriff was there to be, to, to calm the situation down and allow me to get my things and go. So, you know, uh, and there's, there's a hundred more examples of that, but my point was, is that there are bad cops, but it ultimately you got to do what you got to do, you know, and if something horrible is going to happen to you, unfortunately, we just make sure that we get the guy. So after I gave my two cents on it, it went viral and, it was one of the most watched segments at the time. And, and Greg was like, I need you here every week. That They need you here every week. Yeah. Uh, what do we got to do to bring you in? And uh, so we were able to work out a deal and it just kind of went from there. But it's my message. You can have two, two thoughts on one subject. We all mm -hmm. do. This idea of this absolutism or this way of thinking that like all, you know, all cops are bad. All, all white people are racist though all us brothers listen to rap music and don't raise our kids. Like that, that line of thinking that is profitable. Unfortunately, those headlines sell people click. Yeah, they do. That's the problem is we got, we, and it goes the same thing with our kids. We got to stop clicking. We just got to get back in the game. But, and that's kind of where my, that's kind of been my stance the whole time. And, and uh, I find it interesting that, and when one voice stands up to speak, uh, not just as a black man, but as a father and as a man, just trying to navigate these waters. Um, more of us are out there, yeah. you know, because sometimes you feel like uh, as like especially being a black Republican, sometimes you feel like you, you get this idea that it's just, you, no, it's not even close, not even a little bit. They're just you get caught up in the box treatment, this isolation thing. And it's not like that because uh, more often than not, the more successful you are in life, regardless of the color of your skin, the less you want government in your business. Absolutely. So, 
and uh, small, low taxation and small government has nothing to do with the color of your skin. That's just a good way of thinking when if you have conservative values. So, uh, and I, 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 but you can still be cool too. You know, you don't Absolutely. necessarily. So it's it's just it's a funny. I I, I disrupt the box. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's it's funny when they. Uh, try to put me in a box or attack me like, I, you know, you deal with it quite, you deal with it. And I always love the way you deal with it because, you know, there's that famous thing where the girl asked you what you identify. <laughs> and I, I couldn't laugh, but, but I was like, here's a, the average person would have maybe got defensive and you try to use it as a teachable moment. And maybe she, that young lady didn't get it at that moment, but she's go, it's going to be one of those things where a few years from now, your voice will ring in her head. Well, I pray so. Yeah. Especially, uh, I think it's up to like 2 million views. I mean, it's amazing. I'll be in the airport and someone will come up to me and say, you're you're that guy. And I'm like, what guy? The guy that, you know, you explained how you identify as black or don't. You were, you, were, you were the adult in the room, and that is so sorely missed. Well, we got to Yeah, you know, you had, yeah, but you were the adult in the room. And that's what's, that's what we need to get back to. If that's what if we need the adults to come back to the room. You got it. Now, as we get ready to close out, what, I mean, the Gutfeld Show is so successful, and you're an iconic figure there, and it has launched you. I mean, now you're on Fox Nation and everything. What is the that ingredient? You know, the chemistry there, because I've witnessed it, is incredible. But what is the ingredient? What do you think has made your late-night show with Greg Gutfeld so successful? I think because nobody is playing a role. So uh, our our chemistry is everyone is them is in and to themselves, and so uh, no one's really changed. Like the success of the show hasn't changed anybody yet. I mean, Greg's got a little weird with not being you know with some of his you know his weirdness, but but uh, Cat, we all have distinct personalities, and no one really. And the biggest thing is we don't step on each other. Yeah, there's not a um, there's not a uh, You'll see in a lot of shows where there's a lot of one upism or mm -hmm. you know a little back and forth and stuff and and uh, it's been pretty cool because we're just so different. You know, we we're all completely cat and Greg are probably a little bit closer like socially or whatever. Like as soon as I get off the set, I got four kids to check on. So you know, I'm I'm doing my dad hats on and running a business and but the biggest I think the the thing of the biggest success of the show is is the fact that we're just all allowed to be ourselves. Yeah. And it just kind of it just kind of meshes, you know, and um, it's hard to chemistry like that. Three people, three personalities, three strong personalities. Uh, a lot, you can have a lot of issues with that. But I think it's just when that camera comes on, everyone's there to do their job, but everyone has their own lane. I'm the anchor. I'm also the adult in the room to watch Greg and uh, Kat keeps us grounded. And, and Greg provides all the weird eccentric writer stuff. And we just kind of we just kind of go from there. But it, it seems to work. No, without a doubt, it works. People seem to like is just being true to yourself. Like be be yourself, you know. And if 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 that that should be able to work, you turn yourself up a little bit in front of that camera. But if you're genuine, people will love it. And if you're fake, after a while, they'll figure it out. Well, what's next for Tyrus? Uh, oh. I mean, there at the Gutfeld Show. I mean, Fox Nation. Are you going to be getting back into the ring anytime soon? When is, when uh, are you coming Florida. down here to Dallas, Texas? Well, we were just in Fort Worth. Okay. Uh, I actually got a day. Uh, Tyrus Day is uh, named after me. Apparently, the mayor liked my stand-up show. So uh, <laughs> we were in Fort Worth for two days, and I'm sure we're working on something uh, to come back to the Dallas area. But we're going to be in Houston uh, uh, April 23rd, where I'm doing a stand-up show. Uh, and it's at, in the Cullen Theater in Houston, Texas, Sunday, April 23rd at 730. Uh, so I'll be doing a, a show, a stand-up comedy show there. Uh, we're all over the country, and then of course I'm wrestling uh, this weekend. I'm I'm wrestling in Chicago for NWA's uh, three one two third review. But um, entire live shows you can look up on my link tree. Uh, they're pretty much sold out, so uh, you got to get them while the going is good. But it's a good time. It's uh, yeah. about an hour and a half of jokes and stuff, and uh, it's been it's been doing very successful all over the country. So the more we keep going. Uh, you know, and, and my wife does all the booking and stuff. So she's like my agent. So uh, give her a spot. She'll she'll find someplace for me to show up. So. All right. 
keep it in the family. So how can people follow you and stay in touch with all I the have things? Two forms of social media. Okay. Um, and that's my Instagram, which is Tyrus Smash, verify with the check. And uh, Twitter is Planet Tyrus, also with the check. If, the, if it's not those two, it's not me. So I've literally, and they're connected together. So I literally can do one at the same time. So I've, I've got my social media down to two. And uh, eventually I'm going to get it down to one and then be done with the whole damn thing when I retire. There you go. Rot I'm going with rotary phones when it's over. Well, I don't think people remember. the. You know, I still remember my rotary phone number growing up as a kid. 404-874-2836. Yeah. Uh, what was mine? 535-996-5555. That's incredible. Because you don't forget doing. No, you, you know, don't. You don't. don't, don't. don't. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Hey, you know we go back to rotary phones because you know what? By the time they dial, they make up their mind whether this call was really necessary or not. There you go. What's your last final golden nugget that you want to share with the steadfast and loyal audience? I'll just say that, like I said, parents out there, uh, let's just get back to being the adults in the room. Mm hmm. Stop uh, Stop debating people. That there's no point to do it. Let's just get back to what, doing what we got to do. Well, Tyrus, thank you so much for joining us. And you can see him every night on the Greg Gutfeld Show. You can also see him on Fox Nation. And check out his social media so you know where he is appearing. And as he said, uh, Sunday, April the 23rd down in Houston, uh, that's your next stop in the Lone Star State. So you all get out so, there and see Tyrus. Thank you for your time, boss. You got it. And look forward to seeing you up there. And stay safe up in New York City, okay? You too. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here at the Steadfast and Law Podcast. A special thanks goes out to Tyrus, who took time out of his incredibly busy schedule and all the things that he is doing to share some of his insights with us here. If you like this podcast, please click the like button, share it with others. And until next time, steadfast and loyal. Before they burn it down